Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great week thus far this week. And uh, definitely fall weather is uh, upon us. So uh, next couple of weeks, we're going to do two Psalms. We're going to do Psalm 105 this week, pray through it. Together at the beginning, Psalm 106 next week. Both of these Psalms tie into my uh, Galatians class I'm doing on Zoom uh, a couple of Mondays nights per month. Uh, Psalm 105 ties in because it tells the covenant story, <clears throat> how we are part of the uh, people of Abraham and the people of promise. And Psalm 106 uh, illustrates the point that uh, the people of God that had the promise of Abraham were also the problem and the uh, reason for the Torah, the law, and uh, why God uh, gave us law, uh, ultimately looking to Jesus uh, as the Messiah. So today we're going to talk about a little bit about the covenant story, pray through it. Uh, hopefully uh, this will be encouraging because uh, God has made a covenant with Abraham that continues to us today. So let's pray through and read through Psalm 105 together. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, <clears throat> call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done. His miracles and his judgments he has uttered. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, children of Jacob, you chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statue, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion or inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account, and sojourners in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Touch not my anointed ones, do my prophets no harm. When he summoned a famine in the land and broke all the supply of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters. His neck was put in a collar of iron until what he had said came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The rulers of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to bind his princes at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham and the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes. He turned their hearts to hate his people to deal craftily with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them and miracles in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark. They did not rebel against his words. He turned their waters into blood and caused their flesh, their fish to die. Their land swarmed with frogs, even in the chambers of their king. He spoke and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He gave them hail for rain and fiery lightning bolts through their land. He struck down their vine and fig trees and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke and the locusts came, young locusts without number, which devoured all the vegetation in their land, the first fruits, first fruits of all their strength. Then he brought out Israel with silver and gold and there was none among his tribes that stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for dread of them had fallen upon it. 
he spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light by night. They asked and he brought them quail. He gave them bread from heaven in abundance. He opened the rock and water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like a river for he remembered his holy promise and Abraham, his servant. So he brought his pe people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing, and he gave them the lands of the nations, and they took possession of the fruit of other people's toil, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. And we should say amen. This whole uh, Psalm 105, as you read through it and maybe discuss it in a small group this week or just look at it yourself and make some notes in your own uh, uh, journal about Psalm 105, is about the covenant story given to Abraham. The covenant promise to Abraham that in Galatians is referred to as the covenant based on trust that God called Abraham to move from Ur of the Chaldees and to take his people towards Canaan. And Abraham believed God and was reckoned to him as righteousness. And Abraham made a covenant with God. And God made a covenant with Abraham. And that promises to us today. And the reason we read this story today and meditate on it today is it's because of the promise that we're chatting together today. It's a promise that through Abraham's one family, all families would be blessed and they would start out as few in number and little account and sojourners in the land of Canaan but one day they would become like the stars of the sky that includes us one day they would become like the sand in the seashore that includes us in fact Paul says that promise includes both Jew and Gentile slave and free, male and female. I would venture to say today that it includes young and old, black and brown, yellow and red and white, as all peoples of the earth are to be one in the Messiah. That's the promise of God to us that we reflect on this week. As we reflect on this psalm this week, I want you to reflect on what God has done, his wondrous works. This particular psalm talks about the plagues because his people were in exile in Egypt. They were under the empire of Egypt and they had that 430 years that had to be dealt with. But God remembered the promise and he took those plagues and he allowed Egypt to see that he is God was greater than all the other gods. He was greater than the gods of Egypt. And today, God is greater than the God of this world, Satan. He's greater than the gods that people worship today, even each other. He's greater than, greater than the gods of money and consumerism and hedonism. He's get greater than all the religions of the earth. He's greater than all the things that people bow down today. And that God has made a covenant with you and I. That one day, not only do we live between times and we're a new creation now, that one day on earth as it is in heaven, God will bless us again. And God will bless us through the promise of Abraham to be his people. And all nations will then become one nation under God indivisible because God is a leader of that nation of all ethnic groups, young and old, slave and free, male and female, Jew and Gentile, however you want to put it, God through his promise. And as we reflect on that promise this week to be thankful that God is King of Kings and Lord of Lords and that we live under his governance. I pray that God will bless you this week, that God's face will shine upon you this week, and he will give you both grace and peace. Grace for the Gentile and shalom for the Jew in the New Testament. And Paul uses both because both will be one in Jesus. 
I pray you'll be satisfied by God's presence this week and by the covenant that he's given you and I. And God will be satisfied by your presence with him. Have a great week. See you next week.